welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hey lovely people, Kai Pretty Thing here. It's Shantae Marie here, and today I am so excited to be doing a collab with one of my besties here on YouTube. So for my new people tuning in, if you have not already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I am a lifestyle vlogger here on YouTube and I really strive my hardest to share my life with you guys in hopes that it can help, benefit, support, change, just help anybody in the world in their daily life. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're an OG subscriber, thank you again for tuning in. We are going to be answering questions that are like Army versus Air Force. Not like a versus thing, but like obviously there are differences between the two branches. And I am so glad that we have become friends and are able to do this. I love meeting new people here on YouTube and it's great to see another YouTuber and another military service member that has the same goals and wants to prosper here on this platform and just help other people. I love that and it's freaking awesome. Like hashtag, hashtag military YouTuber strong. Like I have the questions on my iPad so I'm gonna be reading off of this. So the first thing is, For the army, we call each other battle buddies and it's like when you go to basic training, they literally drilled us into you that you do not go anywhere without a battle buddy. If you're overseas, nine times out of 10, it goes straight back to that and you don't go anywhere without a battle buddy because if something happens, uh, you need to have somebody, somebody has to have your six and that's what a battle buddy's for. All right, so the unit breakdown is another thing that is different between the branches. And for the army, I guess I'm just gonna go based off of my unit. Um, so the top tier for me is like brigade. And then from brigade, it goes to battalion. From battalion, it goes to your company. And then from your company, it breaks down to your platoon. And that's usually like who you stand in formation with. And then from your platoon, it breaks down to your squad. So there are four squads in each platoon. And that is how you break down the formation. So this is something that they did not focus on very much for me when I went to basic training. I don't know why I'm like literally doing this. When I went to basic training, they really did not focus on that at all. And it's just kind of something that I've had to learn as I go. So I've been in different units. I've been in three different units now. And my unit right now is the first unit that I really feel like I've grasped it What's happening, that's kind of sad to say, that's probably just because it's National Guard, but um, it's just something that you don't really think of if you're just an M-Day soldier, which an M-Day soldier is you do your one weekend a month. So I'm working full time for the National Guard right now, so I really have to understand how it works and maybe that's what's helped me, I don't really know. Well, that is basically how it works for my unit. I know other like active duty people might have debts like debt one, debt two. I don't understand any of that. Your military occupation. So for the army, you go and take your ASVAB and then when you get done, you basically are just like, I wanna do this. And they check to see if it's open and if it's full and you can't do that, then they'll tell you. Um, a lot of times I think recruiters tend to try to get you to do a specific MOS that maybe the military is hurting for. I have heard of people joining like active duty that just want that they went to MEPS, took their ASVAB, and then they just had a list of what was open and available to them. I also have a friend that was National Guard that transferred to active duty and she basically got given a list with like 15 jobs on it and they were like, you have to pick one of these because her MOS wasn't being taken at the time. So it's different for every situation, but nine times out of 10, you go to MEPS and then you tell them, this is what I want. So that is why I have created a video that basically tells you 
how I would suggest going about picking your MOS. So I'll have that, I'll have that linked for you guys if you want to check it out. So what do we do for PT? So PT is like your training regimen and <coughs> in the army they really focus on your preparatory drills so you're going to always do your prep drills sometimes they do a shortened version of them and then you'll do your PT which they might have you run in formation or they might have you do 3060s I, I think it's called 3060s but it's like you sprint for some time and then walk for some time and Basically, the areas of focus on PT for the Army are going to focus on your sit-ups, your push-ups, and your two-mile run. That's what they really want to do. And a lot of times, they will try to squeeze in maybe like team building activities or whatever. But in the National Guard, it's basically just like um, do it on your own time and I am lucky that I'm in a unit now that actually takes it pretty serious and they tend to schedule in a PT time frame in the drill schedule so usually on Sundays they schedule like an hour into the schedule for us to work on it now what you choose to do in your spare time for the rest of the month is on you and when you finish PT they do do a cool down there's a cool down drill for that and uh, all of that stuff is called PRT and there's regulations on exactly how it has to be and when you go to your NCOES uh, they teach you how to do that and you have to actually conduct it and it's a lot to memorize but that is the one thing that I almost got a hundred percent on I got a 99 I didn't mirror my platoon when I was doing the exercise so sucks Basically, the uniform for the army, if you're in your dress uniform, it's going to be your blues. I'm going to insert a picture so you guys can see it, but it's going to be your blues. When we're in our blues, there are some differences uh, between Air Force and Army. Well, there's a lot of differences, but in the army, um, our dress uniform is the only one that females are authorized to wear earrings and then you are also able to wear your hair like your hair doesn't necessarily have to be in a bun like it can be in a cute sort of bun like it still has to be kept and stuff but you can wear it differently than just in a bun and I mean I guess you could do that in your duty uniform but it's like very unlikely that you see people doing that like a lot of people when they wear their dress uniform like go get their hair done so in your dress uniform, you can also, there's either the option of a skirt or there's the option of pants. And there are so many different hats that are capable of being worn with it depending on your rank or like your accomplishments or whatever. And there are also like for the males, I know there's belts. Uh, when you become a NCO, you end up putting, you get a stripe on your pants. Um, I'd be wearing the skirt because I'm not about to go buy another pair of pants until I'm like AGR or something, but uh, I rarely wear my blues. This year is the most that I've ever worn my blues in my life. So um, your uniform, like all of your awards and accomplishments are on your enlisted record brief, or if you're an officer, your ORB and basically that is how you know what to put on your uniform because if it's not in your ERB and it's not in iPerms, which is like the filing system, then you're not gonna wear, you can't, you're technically not supposed to wear that stuff on your uniform. So our duty uniform, however, we are not allowed to wear earrings. It drives me insane, like, because I'm just in that mindset and when I see other branches that are able to do it, I think Air Force might be the only people that are able to do it, but um, I always am like, how is she wearing earrings? And then I remember. So we also, like if you wear glasses, they can only be like black, like neutral colors. They can't be faddish and your hair can never be faddish when you're in your duty uniform. And right now the uniform 
for the guard is still like in the process of transitioning over so it's kind of crazy like there's kind of two different uniforms floating around depending on if your unit your unit has received the funds to be able to buy the uniform for you so it's totally crazy when i go to like the active duty posts and they're like already transitioned and i'm like we are not transitioned like at all so All right, so rank. So I don't really know what I, I don't really know what this means, but the rank structure, I guess, is like there's obviously enlisted an officer and there's like lower enlisted and like senior enlisted, but um, I guess I'm just gonna go into like addressing the rank and the courtesies of the rank and stuff. So I went on a trip for the National Guard to, it was basically a trip that I met tons of people from all the other states in the US. It was really fun. We like went to Reno and stuff. But the one thing that I noticed was like the Air Force people that I went with, they called everybody sir and ma'am. And like in the army, that is not, <laughs> that's not a thing. Like if you call an enlisted soldier, an NCO, a, sir or a ma'am like it's probably about an 80 percent chance that they're going to respond i work for a living or like it's just offensive i guess and it really just depends on your situation though because at, at my job i hear people do it all the time but it'll be like in it'll be like nco to nco being like oh hey sir how you doing like but it's rare, like it is very rare. If people do that, they're really good friends and they know each other outside, but I know like on the active duty side, you would not hear that at all. Um, sir and ma'am is like only used for officer. And we also have warrant officers too. But yeah, sir and ma'am is how you address an officer. And if they are an NCO, basically you call them by their rank. So, you obviously need to know the rank structure. Alright, so hair standards. Now, it's kind of fuzzy sometimes because you are allowed to have natural hair colors. Like, you can have natural hair. Um, so, I could dye my hair blonde and like technically it's okay. But if someone wants to be like, mm, that's faddish because like you're tan skinned and obviously blonde hair would more than likely not grow out of this head, um, then it could be taken a certain way. But I think that the lines for the hair standards have has been blurred so much now and people are so scared of getting like, complaints filed against them that it takes a pretty ballsy person to actually confront that like you basically have to be super out of red for it to happen and especially in the guard like in the guard you see those people one weekend a month so it's kind of just like you got to be picky and choosy with what you're really gonna say which is sad because I totally understand where the army standards come from and like that's our history being in the army that's what makes us different. Like that's what makes us that 1% and it's just kind of crazy how things get thrown by the wayside. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I should do a video on this, on the things that are like different, the things that I've seen in the National Guard at Drill Weekend because there's been a lot of times that I've seen some things that I was like, mm, let me get 670-1 out because I know that that is wrong. Okay, so the makeup standard. Um, basically, it just has to look natural. Obviously, like my eyeshadow right now is a no-go. You would not wear that, but it's crazy. I have friends that are active duty that would wear winged eyeliner all the time, and they never got in trouble. So when I was at AIT, I actually would get stuff said to me all the time. Why do you wear so much makeup? Okay, it's in the regs that I can wear makeup, 
as long as it looks natural, like, why are you questioning me? Especially because it wasn't like I was wearing anything crazy. Like, I definitely don't do contour. My contour is not on fleek. Um, maybe the one thing that I might go overboard with is, like, highlight because... I'm gonna be popping somewhere. So yeah, when I go to work um, on a regular basis though, for my for my full-time guard job, I definitely don't wear makeup at all. So like, I feel like if you're in a situation where you have to question it, I probably would not do it. Like basic training, don't even bother. Like that, that is contraband. Like don't even bother taking makeup because you're not gonna get to wear it even at graduation. The nail standards, so a lot of people don't know this for some reason, but the freaking nail standard for females in the army is that your nails can be a fourth of an inch past the tip of your finger. And you guys, if you've been here on my channel for a while, know that your girl always have fake nails, cute nails, they were always fake, but they were always like, I, I would like be right at the standard and like people forget that people some people have bigger nail beds than others some people have long ass fingers like people always got something to say so I feel like if you're gonna push it to the limit you better be carrying a copy of 670-1 in your pocket at all times and when people had the nerve to say things to me I would be like okay well recite the regulation to me like what what does the sergeant what does the regulation say and if they can't recite it back to you, but you know your shit and you're on top of it, you're good. All right, so jewelry. Um, for me, for the army, for jewelry, you, I think, I don't know. I don't want to even talk about this because I'm not sure that I know it completely because it has changed. I think you can wear like up to two rings but I think you can wear like one ring on each hand. I don't really know. You're allowed to wear a necklace. It just can't be like showing AR670-1 and it shall tell you. All right, so the last thing is what do you have to do to make promotions? So it's different for the Army National Guard. Um, for promotion for us, there is an EPS list that comes out and basically you have to have all of your NCOESs done, like your schools, and you have to be passing a PT test. You also have to pass height weight and you also have to be at the top of that list. So. There are specific ways that they calculate points and that gives you a score which puts you on the list. Um, for me and my MOS, I've always been at the top. Like, I don't think I've ever since I joined not been at the top, but it's because you get like 75 points for a, an education and I have a master's degree. So that's probably the reason why. Um, I also, once you hit E5, uh, your PT score is supposedly not calculated into whether you can get promoted or not. I just found this out, like I just learned this because I was steady out here trying to get 300s on the PT test and then I learned that and I was like, what? Because uh, the lower enlisted ranks, like you, you, it counts, like well, your score counts towards promotions. Now, we also have to fill out uh, 4100 and that basically says like, there's five different options for where you're willing to go. Like option five is like, I'm willing to travel anywhere in the state for promotion, which is what I always select. So like I could get a freaking job for drill weekend and get promoted at some unit that's out by Colorado. And that would suck so bad, but like they would totally have to provide me somewhere to stay like a hotel or something. But yeah, that's basically how you get promoted in the guard. It's a really big system and definitely something that I could totally make a video on if you guys wanted to see that. But anyways, this is going to conclude my video. Make sure you guys go check out my girl's channel and make sure that you subscribe. And yeah, say thank you so much. 
for tuning in. I do have a lot of military videos here on my channel. I made sure that I put them all into a playlist, so make sure you guys check that out. And if you are new, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, and I will check you guys later in my next video. Bye, guys.